us, there is no victory. There lived a man who was a legend among mercenaries. A man who put together a formidable unit of soldiers of fortune long before the advent of private military companies that dared to call itself a nation. A man who, with his nation at his back, made an enemy of modern capitalist society and the world. This is a story. We're not mercenaries. We're not a foreign legion. MSF's a business, a new kind of business. Known by code names such as Snake and later Big Boss, he proved himself as an agent of US Special Forces Unit Fox, but a certain incident spurred him to part ways with the military. He is said to have roamed the world's war zones as a gun for hire. In 1974, Snake and his partner Kazariah Miller, Kazariah, Kazariah, Miller were running a small mercenary outfit in Colombia when they were visited by a man claiming to be a professor from Costa Rica's University for Peace. According to this professor, there have been several incidents involving a mysterious armed group in Costa Rica, <laughs> a country with a without a military of its own. The professor was accompanied by one of his students, a girl named Paz, who had been abducted and assaulted by this group. The professor and Paz offered to hire Snake to drive the group out of Costa Rica. However, Snake saw through their deception in an instant. Motherfucker. My name is Paz, and I'll do anything to protect my namesake. The professor was a KG was actually a KGB agent, and the armed group in question backed by the CIA. The Cold War is no stranger to such overseas clandestine operations between US and Soviet agents. But the CIA's motives were a mystery. Paz had escaped from one of the CIA group's facilities with a cassette tape. On it was the voice of a woman known as the Mother of Special Forces, the Boss, with a popular song from 1973 playing in the background. It was reasonable to conclude that the recording was made recently. Snake was stunned. The Boss is supposed to be dead. What was she doing in Costa Rica? Vacationing? Damn it. Damn it. Okay. I'll do it for the girl, for Paz. The boss was Snake's mentor and the only woman he had ever loved. But 10 years prior, Snake was forced to take the boss's life as part of a mission, a bitter memory that still haunted him. Despite realizing that she simply could not have survived, Snake was unable to turn the professor down, telling himself he was intervening as a deterrent for a defenseless country, as well as to honor the virtue of Paz's name peace. Snake departed for Costa Rica. Once there, he ran into a unit of Sandinista National Liberation Front that had fled Nicaragua. After rising up against the pro-American Somoza regime, these rebels had become targets for the CIA group who killed their commandante, which is Spanish for commander, and left the unit in shambles. Everyone treats me like a child. I couldn't stand it anymore. Snake rescued the Sandinistas and invited them back to Mother Base, the new offshore base of operations provided to them by the KGB. The fallen Commandante's, commandante's children, Amanda and Chico, saw something of their hero Che Guevara and Snake and grew to idolize him. This triggered a rapid expansion of Snake's forces. However, he was still no closer to discovering what the CIA was really up to in Costa Rica. I believe in peace through nuclear deterrence. Snake then encountered Huey, a wheelchair-bound scientist being forced to work for the CIA. Huey revealed the CIA's terrifying plot. They were, develop uh, they were developing a system by which, following radar detection of an enemy nuclear launch, launch an AI would analyze all available data and automatically execute a retaliatory nuclear strike at appropriate targets. Although designed to increase the power, power of nuclear deterrence, Coldman, the CIA, the CIA's Central American Station Chief, planned to actually launch a nuke to demonstrate the effectiveness of automated retaliation. The demonstration was only five days away. Snake rushed to the development lab to stop their AI from being completed. Will my fucking cat stop fighting? I'm trying to read. You've left behind everything. Your country. Your identity, your past and ideals. And there's still one thing you haven't let go of. These fucking cats. 
Just kidding. Upon infiltrating the lab, Snake was greeted by the voice from the tape, the same voice of his lost mentor, but this was in fact the, the voice of the retaliatory system's AI. Its developer, Dr. Strange Love, had selected the boss, the so-called greatest soldier who ever lived, as the AI's intellectual model. However, succumbing to personal obsession, Strange Love had deviated from the researcher's original purpose. Not only had he reproduced the boss's voice, she, she was on the verge of bringing her psyche back to life in AI form, driven by a bizarre kind of love. What if the boss could truly be revived in every detail, if only in AI form? Snake hesitated as Strange Love's idea torched his sense of loss. He got his guard down. Snake was immediately captured. The boss AI was completed in Peace Walker, the nuclear-equipped walking battle tank housing this retaliatory AI system, when active. I was made to fight. I am a gun. Snake fought in vain as Peace Walker prepared to fire the nuke, but in the face of catastrophe, it ultimately a machine that saved mankind from nuclear annihilation, the boss AI sank Peace Walker to the bottom of Lake Nicaragua, stopping the launch. With the crisis behind him, Snake took advantage of his recent mobilization to continue Mother Base's expansion indefinitely. Snake understood that the AI had acted to save the world, but that did not change the fact that this system, based on the boss's mind, had, to ch had chosen at last to lay down its weapons. As a weapon himself, Snake felt the act to be a rejection of his life. Undeterred, Snake and Miller invited Huey and Strangelove to Mother Base to develop Metal, metal, fuck, metal Gear Zeke, a bipedal weapon that eventually equipped with a nuclear warhead suddenly making their unit a nuclear power. Fuck with us, get nuked, bitch. Fox. Well, we're not fu Shut up. This place will no longer be my heaven. This place will no longer be my heaven, I mean. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mother Base took in Paz, already an orphan, but now left without even her KGB. Benefactor following, and the end of the crisis, however, this was all engineered by an intelligence agency known as Cypher. Under Cypher's orders, Paz got close to Amanda, Chico, and the others while exploring more and more of the base. Secretly plotting to hijack Zeke, her objective was to use the weapon as a bargaining chip to force Snake into becoming the military arm for Cypher. Paz's attempt failed when Snake defeated Zeke, and she was thrown beneath the waters of the Caribbean. It was only then that Snake learned Chico had fallen in love with her. Cat, shut the fuck up! A diary she kept while on the base was discovered several days later. It revealed a young girl torn between serving Cypher and following her heart. Just follow your heart. Perhaps, due to Paz revealing the existence of Snake's nukes to Cypher, the International Atomic Energy Agency contacted Mother Base to request that it agree to a nuclear inspection. If word got out that Snake's unit had a nuclear weapon, it would face severe criticism from around the world. But Huey, acting on his own, informed that I, basically IKEA, I'm just kidding, IAEA, the mother base, would allow the inspection. His reasoning was that as long as they kept Zeke and its nukes hidden from the inspectors, they could demonstrate to the international community that they were not a threat. The option to call off the inspection having expired, Snake and his men reluctantly got preparations underway. Meanwhile, Amanda deployed to Cuba to assist the Sardinistas. Sandinistas, why do you say Sardinistas? Sardines! Learned that Paz had survived. The timing could have not been worse. Suspecting her of turning her back on the organization, Cypher had captured Paz and was interrogating her at a U.S. military base on the southern tip of Cuba. Chico learned of this and set out to save Paz by himself. It was not long before a radio message from Chico reached Mother Base, saying he too had been captured. I know it hurts right now, but it'll all be over soon. With an idea as to Cypher's true identity, Snake could not allow what Chico and Paz knew to fall into their hands. Furthermore, if he could rescue Paz, he might be able to get information from her that would help him fight against Cypher. On the eve of nuclear inspection, Snake made the decision to leave for Cuba.